Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish, and this is one of the coolest cameras that I have ever used in my entire life, the Hasselblad 907X. So if you watch this channel for a while, you've definitely seen my video on my beloved 500CM from Hasselblad, the vintage camera that I got from my uncle from the 70s. As well, you've seen my review on the Hasselblad X1D2, which shares the same sensor and lens mount with this 907X, but this is kind of the combination of both of those cameras you get this beautiful, beautiful vintage form factor. You get the screen that folds up like this and allows you to have that you know, low waist level perspective that you got from the original 500CM and that whole line of cameras. But it also gives you the ability to adapt lenses as well as use the XCD line of lenses from Hasselblad, which are absolutely fantastic. They are definitely not cheap <laughs> by any means for sure, but they are beautiful. Obviously this is the 30 millimeter F 3.5 and it fits the camera and the aesthetic and everything really, really well. Now I really wish I had my 500 CM with me so that I could show the camera side by side as well as actually mount the back to the 500 CM body, which is one of the biggest selling points for me in this system is the ability to actually just toss this back on your actual film body. But unfortunately, uh, I let my uncle, who is the uh, previous owner of that camera, borrow it to, uh, you know, bring some nostalgia back into his life. So I don't have that camera with me, but uh, I've actually used the original CFV 50C, not the version two that this is, but I've used it before uh, on my Hasselblad and it's been awesome. So maybe I will be able to borrow this camera setup in the back at a different time and we can do a video comparing the two of those. But today we are gonna be talking about this system, this camera and this kit kind of in particular. So this is gonna be a review on the 907X, but it's also gonna be about sort of my experience with this particular kit. The main thing in here, which is a positive for a lot of people, but then also a negative if you are using other manual lenses, like lenses from the Leica M system, which I'll talk about in another video and have talked about it in previous videos. The sensor and the camera, the camera itself doesn't have a shutter in it. The shutter is a leaf shutter within these lenses, meaning that you have to wait for the sensor itself to read out. The sensor readout on this is pretty slow and you'll get some really weird motion. But for portraits and things like that, as long as people aren't moving too much and you can keep a pretty steady hand, it's definitely possible, um, but you can check out some other videos I'll link below to me talking about that with the X1D, um, as well as some other lenses that I'm not sure when I'm publishing this one, if they're gonna be out or not, but I will have talked about them for sure and I will try to link them below. But again, if I was spending like 20 grand or whatever, this is the setup I would get. I've used the 30 millimeter F 3.5 before when I was using it with the X1D2. It is fantastic. It's about like a 24 millimeter equivalent-ish. As a higher megapixel camera, it's really, really cool to get kind of that wider perspective. So I used it for a lot of establishing shots, interiors, um, some group portraits, as well as, you know, landscapes and, and that kind of stuff. And then the 80 millimeter F 1.9, it is, you know, a true kind of more portraity style lens. The rendering and the look of everything like this is definitely what I would want and what I would be expecting out of kind of this medium format system. Now I'll say this combination is definitely really, really heavy. So it's not going to be as joyful of a carry as the 30, but I wouldn't say that it was impossible to carry because the setup still is really, really small and Although this really kind of does worry me because I don't own this camera. <laughs> um, holding it like this and kind of wearing it off to the side around my neck wasn't something that was overwhelming. And kind of just bringing this up and using this in this kind of way worked really, really well. And then I was often kind of just turning this to the side and using it like this, uh, which also worked. It wasn't 
ideal, I guess. You know, it'd be nice almost if there's a, a way to add a viewfinder or something that's an actually electronic viewfinder. Or, you know, obviously if there was a way to make the sensor in here just vertical instead of horizontal, that would be great. Or if they just made a square sensor or whatever. But, say la vie, uh, it was still great. This lens performs fantastic, uh, no issues. The bokeh is beautiful, the sharpness is great. All that kind of stuff. It's definitely what I would be looking for in a lens. I know that it's it's just a different thing, but man, if they could make a series of lenses that didn't have autofocus and it just, you know, relied on the old school stuff, but still had the Hasselblad leaf shutter in here, that would be really, really fantastic as well because I feel like they could do a lot more with something like that. And both of these lenses I felt were absolutely superb in both sharpness and contrast and um, chromatic aberration and all of those kind of issues. They're definitely not cheap lenses. They are in like, you know, the three, four, five thousand dollar range. But I would say they are definitely well worth the money in terms of the quality that you're getting out of them. I definitely don't think the lenses are anything that's going to be holding you back within this system. Now, while I'm talking about things that are going to hold you back within this system, the most glaring issue for me is A, things like the startup time. Now it's open and then you have to even click through to get to the screen and then the thing about this is it's just such a slow process. It's really great having this secondary little setup here, but the contrast style autofocus on here was just like a lot of yep, 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 yep. And when you've gotten used to having a camera that, you know, like a Canon or a Sony or something like that, that has really, really good face tracking, eye detect, all that kind of stuff, continuous autofocus, using something like this is just so, I don't know, it's very slow. And then there are definitely times where I'm wondering if, okay, is this actually in focus? Is it not in focus? I'm not really sure. And you'd actually see that I was changing between kind of like holding it down. I was often, you know, using this almost like a joystick. And then I spent a lot of time needing to kind of zoom in and confirm focus on stuff. So again, it's, it's you know, a medium format thing and you're not gonna be using this for sports. And it's hard to compare as well because, you know, everyone that I've heard review this or talk about it has talked about how slow it is. But using the, you know, original 500 CM camera is also really slow. So, I don't know, if, if you think of it and treat it like that, then it doesn't feel as bad. And as long as your expectations aren't that you're gonna be using this for some sort of high, <laughs> well, or really any sort of actual movement that you wanna track something, if you're using this for stationary objects, for portraits, for things like that, I definitely think this is a very, very usable camera in that way. It's just knowing the limitations of a camera like this and then working within those limitations, that way you're not gonna be disappointed and you're not gonna be pushing it to do something that it wasn't really meant to do. So as I've been kind of playing with this little side attachment here, I definitely will talk about that as well. So one of the positives about this grip is it definitely helps kind of secure the camera when you put it down. It also gives you a few different options in terms of your exposure. With this, you can definitely set this up to, you know, this is your aperture changing and then this is your shutter speed when in manual mode. To set your ISO, you're gonna have to go on to the menu and click this and move this up and down and around. I did find that this was a much faster way of going about this. And then the other thing that I was most sort of worried about, 35 and wider is often in a landscape orientation and then 50 and further, depending on what I'm photographing for portraits or whatever, is usually in a portrait orientation. So using this allowed me to get more of an, I don't know, an easier way to go about photographing things in a portrait orientation. And I spent about half the wedding that I had with the grip on and then about half the wedding with it off. And 
it is super handy. You can turn this on, you can have this for manual focus and you can kind of go through all this stuff. It gives you a joystick where you can move the focus point around. I basically thought that this was going to be an absolute necessity to use this camera in any meaningful way. And while I did find it to be really, really helpful, it also just kind of added some bulk, which I wasn't that big of a fan of. I would say about halfway through the wedding when I took it off and just used this, it became much more of just like a joy. It slowed me down again. It wasn't making me think I was going to be able to move quickly and do all that kind of stuff. And it gave me back kind of that like slow and steady wins the race. We're going to take our time. We're going to use this like a film camera. And that kind of thing just really, really helped out. The only thing, and maybe I didn't understand how this worked, that was a little bit annoying though, was you have this little dial here, which changes your aperture. And then you press the side button, and then that'll change your shutter speed, which is great. But oftentimes, I just wish I could switch this. And so I'm sure someone in the comments will just be like, oh yeah, it's custom function 12 or something like that. A bit of an annoyance, but I still really loved kind of like the old school way of going about this. The shutter button's right here, which is the same spot it is on my 500cm. The lens removal button or whatever's right here. So all this whole setup just feels very nostalgic. And honestly, for like a personal camera or something that would slow me down on weddings, this thing was absolutely fantastic and a total joy to use. To kind of round this out, this camera is one of the most sort of inspiring, joy-filled. It brings you into a completely different mindset, which is something I obviously love because I, I photograph with Leicas and a bunch of other kind of offset cameras. This is a camera that isn't made necessarily for a bunch of studio shooting and a bunch of obviously sports or movement or anything like that. This is a camera that is just something to be inspired by, to use, for personal stuff, it's just like, I don't know, I, I the word that I would use is definitely just inspiring. It's a super cool camera. It harkens back to everything that I love about Hasselblad, about film photography, about all that kind of stuff. Slapping that into a digital body, giving you a lot of those just amazing features. Again, if you just kind of know the difference, because I know I'm gonna get questions between combining, you know, should I buy some Fuji film camera or should I buy the X1D2 or should I buy this? The best thing I can say as I have used all of them now is just to try them out and see which one fits in, well, A, your budget, and then B, your style of photography and what you're actually using it for. You know, if I had an unlimited budget, I would definitely pick up this camera and use it as both a, a personal camera, a travel camera, and I would still obviously use it at weddings, but I just wouldn't expect it to be something that it's not. So if you're gonna go out, use a absolutely beautiful camera, be inspired by the stuff you use, this thing is definitely fantastic. And if it was, I don't know, half the price that it currently is, I, I might be able to consider actually affording it. But I wanna say a thank you to Hasselblad for letting me play with such a beautiful piece of equipment. Hopefully that answered some questions for you guys. If you have any more, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, I'm very, very sad to part with this camera in a couple days. And uh, hopefully this won't be the last time I will be having one of these in my hands. So please subscribe if you haven't already. I definitely have more videos within this whole system do a lot of stuff with Fuji and Leica and obviously with Hasselblad. And honestly, if you are just a photography nerd like me that is interested in this kind of stuff, whether you, you know, shoot Canon or Sony or something like that anyway, please subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Um, and leave a comment and a like on the video and let me know kind of like what you think of this camera. Is it a complete waste of money? Is it something that is worthwhile? Personally, I think it is, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So thanks again, and I will see you all on the next one.